Hi, thank you for joining this mini webinar. It's going to be really, really crisp and short to the point webinar. Before we get into the presentation, let me just take a couple of minutes to introduce myself. I am CA and Raja, Chartered Accountant by Qualification, a teacher, trainer by passion. I started my career as a banker, credit analyst with State Bank of India, worked for a period of four years. In very short period, I had the opportunity of becoming team leader, credit processing cell. So worked on 250 plus projects, it's 5000 crore plus size. Then came out and started my CA practice, had my practice for a period of seven and a half years alongside had this teaching training. Thanks to technology, today through online, I teach two lakh plus students all over the world, basically on banking, credit and financial analysis and majority of them are working banking executives. I'm really glad that my courses are helping them and I'm sure this course will be relevant and useful for you as well. Let's get into the webinar. In this video, let's do a small comparison between turnover method and MPBF method with regard to working capital assessment. Both the methods are used for assessing working capital required for a business entity. But of course we know turnover method is used for assessing working capital limits up to say 5 crore and MPBF method which is the result of tandem committee method is used for assessing working capital beyond that. And turnover method makes a general assumption with regard to current assets. What is the assumption? It assumes current assets will be 25% of the estimated turnover. Whereas MPBF method recognizes current asset can be a result of their cash cycle. It can be a result of their inventory management practices. It can be a result of the collection period. So here there is no assumption. In MPBF method, there is no assumption with regard to current asset buildup, but turnover method assumes current asset means it is 25% of estimated turnover. That's why turnover method is suitable for small scale units where the limit is capped up to 5 crore and beyond that MPBF is considered as more relevant. But in case, if you are going to do a comparison between the turnover method and MPBF method, what kind of impact it will have? That's what I'm trying to do here. So let's take a scenario, a scenario where a unit is reporting a turnover of let's say 400. You can uh, view this as 400 lakhs, you can view this as 400 million, whatever. But if you are going to do assessment under these two methods, how it will be? That's what we are going to see. Okay. So in both these scenarios, that is under turnover method and MPBF method, the sales assumed is 400. So what is the turnover method does? It makes an assumption for current asset. It assumes current asset is going to be 25 percentage of estimated sales. So 400 into 25 percentage, it is 100. This is assumed current asset. But that is not the case with the MPBF method because MPBF method looks into the inventory holding period, then receivables collection period and accordingly it arrives at current asset. Okay. So current assets are estimated based on various information and look at here for the same level of sales here the estimated current asset is 150 which is higher than what was assumed under turnover method okay right so these two information are very critical now to proceed further with the assessment we have to see whether there are any sources available for funding the current asset what are the possible sources available for funding the current asset one can be other current liabilities, two can be owner's money which is or long term funds coming to support current asset which is networking capital and finally the bank fund. That's what we are trying to assess. Okay. So for this assumed or estimated current asset, let's see what are the sources available. The first source is other current liability. Whether other current liability is factored in turnover method, answer is no. Okay. So it assumes other current liabilities are nil. Whereas MPBF method looks into what are the other current liabilities available to fund the current asset. In this case, current asset is 150 and other current liabilities are 50 available to fund the current asset. So what is the net current asset that have to be funded? It is 150 minus 50, which is only 100 and we call that as working capital gap. Whereas under turnover method, we assumed no current liabilities. So working capital gap is going to be 100 minus 0, it is 100. In both cases, the number incidentally happened to be same, but it can be different according to variation in other current liabilities under MPBF method. The next assumption under turnover method is with regard to margin. 
This method assumes 20 percentage margin on current asset. Okay. So what is the current asset? It is 100. On this, what is 20 percentage? 100 into 20 percentage, it is 20. It means 100 is the gap. 20 have to be funded by the promoters through long-term funds. It means balance 100 minus 20, 80 is the eligible bank finance under turnover method. Whereas if you look at MPBF method, they have a specific criteria with regard to margin. We have seen working capital gap is 100, but margin is not applied on the working capital gap. Rather, it is applied on the current asset itself. So the total current asset of 150 on which margin at the rate of 25 percentage will be applied. So 150 into 25 percentage works out to 37.5. So 100 minus 37.5, the eligible bank finance will be 62.5. Now you can compare and contrast. See, same level of sales, same level of working capital gap, but look at the eligible bank finance. Why? Two reasons. One, because of factoring other current liabilities. Two, because of differences in margin. So in your opinion, which method is more scientific? Is it turnover method or MPBF method? If you ask me, MPBF method is more accurate because it sees what is the estimated buildup, not an assumed buildup of current asset, rather estimated buildup of current asset. And it sees how much can be funded by others and it insists a 25 percentage margin from the borrower and only the balance is being funded whereas turnover method is blind about other current liabilities and it also insists only the minimal margin and it gives excess finance to the borrower so there is a possibility because look at the scenario i'm saying it is for the same customer okay so for him, the actual requirement is only 62.5 going by this logic. And now he has been funded 80. So there is an excess financing. There is a possibility of excess financing. Maybe if you net off the difference in margin of 5%, the excess funding will still be there. And there is a possibility he can use it for some other purposes. And that's where the financial mismanagement starts. If that is the case, a question may arise then why banks are going ahead with the turnover method why not they stipulate or insist mpbf for all the borrowers in order to go ahead with the mpbf method borrowers should have a proper infrastructure for doing all this for assessing for managing their current liabilities for bringing in margin and all requires infrastructure which may not be possible with small scale borrowers so that's why banks are going ahead with a generalized assumption that their current asset buildup will be 25% of turnover, meaning 20% of this current asset buildup will be funded by them and 80% of assumed current asset can be funded as cash credit, which works out to 20% of estimated turnover. Thank you so much. We have come to the end of this webinar and I'm sure you would have really derived value from this short and crisp webinar. If you wish to continue this learning journey, I have an amazing opportunity for you. I have published several courses on banking and financial analysis area, each course costing 2000 rupees. But for you, I'm going to give you a special offer. Here we go. Banking credit courses bundle. This includes course number one banking credit analysis process it's a comprehensive course with 200 plus lectures it covers financial analysis working capital term loan lcbg it's a comprehensive ever course then we have course number two that is how to carry out financial analysis as a banker this is going to focus exclusively on financial ratio analysis cash flow analysis and fund flow analysis then comes course number three how to carry out term loan appraisal and analysis as a banker it's a comprehensive course focusing on the technical aspects around project finance and term loan these are all the topics then comes course number four, how to prepare CMA report for bank loan through eight sections. This course will take you through entire CMA report preparation process for bank loans. Then we have course number five, how to read balance sheet. So if you are a non-finance person, this course will give you complete insight into balance sheet, how to read them, how to interpret them, how to analyze them. Okay.
then we have course number six how to read civil report by taking this course you will get a complete picture of civil report reading process then we have course number seven how to prepare cash budget for bank loans this course will help you to understand the concept of cash budget which is widely used in short term lending like ad hoc credit facilities letter of credit and all so far i have introduced seven courses of 1999 each it means seven courses of value 13993 but you are going to get it only for 2599 and it is not yet over i am going to give you some more bonus Course number eight, collateral security is a comprehensive study. Course nine, how to carry out credit risk trading for non-trading entities. Course number ten, in this course you will learn banking credit analysis through various case studies. So now it is ten courses of value close to twenty thousand, but you are going to pay only two thousand five hundred and ninety-nine. It is not yet over. Some more bonus. Course number eleven. how to read audit report course 12 this focuses on letter of credit and course 13 focuses on financial analysis in very short duration so you have 13 courses of value close to 26000 rupees but you are going to get it for just 2599 so it is basically seven main courses and you are going to get another six complimentary courses six courses as bonus so overall it is 13 courses of value close to 26000 rupees it's 1500 plus lectures you get lifetime access for all these pre recorded courses you can access them in desktop laptop mobile iphone ipad and the overall cost is around 26000 but you are going to get it only for 2599 so this is a once in a time opportunity for you enroll now i'll see you inside the course